Transport Phenomena in Biosystem, Module 2, Conservation and Momentum, Segment 2, Conservation Relations, with me Yusuf from Institute Technology Bandung. Previously, we have discussed about fleet kinematics. In this segment, we will discuss about conservation relations. A complete analysis of any transport process requires the specification of conservation relations, constitutive equations, and boundary conditions. These equations can be specified either in an integrated form that describes the average behavior of the fleet or in a differential form that describes motion and forces at each point in the fluid. The resulting equations can be solved analytically or numerically. Conservation of mass. Let's consider a control volume of constant size that is fixed in space. A fluid mixture passes through the borders of the volume. Within this volume, chemical reactions can occur. Such a dynamic situation can lead to changes in the concentration of the various components of the mixture, which can be expressed by equation 8. In this section, only non-reacting systems are considered, and the third term on the right-hand side of the equation vanish. The system under study can be a single, pure component or a mixture. At this point, we did not focus on the individual component of the system, but rather on the total mass entering or leaving the control volume. Since we are examining the total mass of the system, entry into and exit from the control volume can occur only by fluid flows. As a result, the mass balance can be restated as shown in equation 9. Momentum balances. In general, momentum is the product of mass and velocity. The rate of momentum accumulation is the rate of change of momentum, which equals to the force. A momentum balance in a system can be expressed in words by equation 10. Restating the equation so that all of the momentum terms are on the same side indicates that the net force acting on a system is simply the net change of momentum. Forces acting on the control volume are divided into body forces and surface forces. Body forces such as gravity and electromagnetic fields act on the entire fluid mass throughout the control volume, for example the net gravity force. Forces per unit area acting on control volume surfaces are known as stresses, with units of forces per area. Stresses are tensors and each component have two directional components associated with them, as shown in the middle figure. Stresses are represented as sigma, or sigma ij, where the index i refers to the plane on which the stress acts, and the index j refers to the direction in which the stress acts. The orientation of each surface can be described in terms of a vector n, of unit magnitude that is normal to and directed away from the surface. Stresses act normal or tangent to a controlled volume surface. Tangential stresses are also known as shear stress. The sigma yy is a normal stress acting on a plane of constant y in the y direction. Likewise, sigma yx is a shear stress acting on a plane of constant y in the direction. The sign convention used in this book is that the stress is positive when it is exerted by the fluid in the direction which the unit outward normal vector points, since n point outward in the positive y direction from the control volume surface as shown in the figures, sigma yy is positive and tensile. The stress change sign when the unit normal vector faces in the negative direction. A consequence of this sign convention is that compressive stresses such as pressures are negative because these stresses point in the direction opposite that of the unit normal. For shear stresses, the convention is adopted that the fluid on the face with the greater algebraic value exerts positive stresses on the face with the lesser value. The sigma yx, sigma yy, and the sigma yz shown acting on the plane of constant y that represents the upper surface of the cube are positive. Stress tensors have two important properties that are valid for most fluids. 
First, stresses and torques on the material point are in equilibrium. Second, the stress tensor is symmetric. Another important fluid phenomena related to applied stress is the property that a fluid at rest cannot support a shear stress. Pressure is the only stress that acts on a fluid at rest. Pressure is compressive and acts normal to a surface. At a point, pressure is uniform in all directions. Because of this distinction between stresses that can be supported at rest and stresses under motion, the stress tensor sigma is divided into two components as shown in equation 12. The force of the fluid acting on a surface with the unit outward normal vector n is given by equation 13. The term n multiplied with c represents the vector. Boundary conditions. Specific boundary conditions depend upon whether the boundary is an interface between two immiscible fluids or between a solid and a fluid. First, consider a solid fluid surface or interface. Either the stresses or the velocities at this interface need to be specified. If the stress or force applied to a solid surface is known, then the boundary condition is that the normal stresses are continuous across an interface and can be expressed by equation 14. Tangential to the surface, the surface stresses are also equal at an interface which can be expressed by equation 15. At the solid fluid boundary, the non-slip condition is almost always used, which expresses that the fluid velocity tangent to the impermeable solid surface equals to the velocity of the solid surfaces as shown in equation 16. For a fluid-fluid interface, the stress conditions of equation 14 to 15 apply. Further, the velocity is the same for each fluid at the interface which can be expressed by equation 17. For the next segment, we will discuss about fluid statics. Until then, I am Yusuf from Institute Technology Bandung.